Hey LWC kids, it's Amy. I really miss you and I know your Sunday school teachers really miss you and hopefully we can all be together soon. Um, until then we'll keep bringing you lessons here on YouTube and hopefully you're enjoying them. Um, but we really miss you and miss seeing you in person. And I know you all miss the candy bowl. And the candy bowl misses you too. Um, I just wanted to bring you a word today that um, it's actually a word that God gave me for you guys a couple years ago. Um, and it just really gave me a vision for you guys. And so I wanted to share it with you today because I feel like it's important for you to know what God says about you. And so we're going to look at this together. If you have your Bible, go grab it. You can pause this video and go grab your Bible and we'll look at some scripture together. Um, so we're going to... Read a little bit from Matthew 21. We're not going to read all of it. I'm just going to summarize um, some stuff that happens here. Um, so in Matthew 21, starting in verse 12, Jesus goes to the temple. And the temple is like the Jewish church. And so he goes to the temple and there's some people selling stuff in the temple. But they're not just selling stuff. They're lying and cheating and stealing from, from the other people. And... So Jesus is pretty upset. I mean, if you think about it, if you, we went to our church and somebody was there selling stuff, but really they were lying to us and cheating our families out of money um, and stealing from us, we'd be pretty upset. You know, this is our place where we go to worship the Lord and somebody is kind of messing with that and making it yucky. And so Jesus was pretty upset. So he drives all these people out of the temple. He gets rid of them, makes them go away. Um, and then these sick people start coming to him. The blind people and the sick people, they start coming to the temple so that Jesus can heal them. And you know what? Like these sound like good things. Like Jesus is taking care of business and he's healing people. Like this is great. And But the religious leaders and the teachers, they're upset because they don't like Jesus and they want to trap him. They want to get him arrested. They want to get him in trouble. And so they don't like what he's doing. They just don't like anything that he does. And so they're pretty not happy about this, but they get even more mad because some kids come into the temple and they start praising Jesus. And so the leaders get pretty upset. So we're going to read this. And so we're going to read Matthew 21, starting in verse 15 says, but when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants? You Lord have called forth your praise. And I love this passage. You know, it's a little bit weird, but I love this passage because, um, Jesus is saying, no, what these kids are doing, it's important, it's powerful, it's good. Like, this is something that God planned for these kids. Um, but also, he's quoting scripture. So he's not just saying it. He's actually quoting a scripture. It's in Psalms 8-2. So if you don't know where Psalms is, it's like halfway through your Bible. If you just flip to the middle, you'll probably end up in Psalms. Um but Psalms 8, 2 says, You have taught children and infants to tell of your strength, silencing your enemies and all who oppose you. Your praise matters. What you do with your words, it matters. Like, God has put something in you where you innately know how to worship Him. You, deep down inside, inside of your nature, inside of who God created you to be, he put inside you the ability to praise him and that gives you power over the enemy and that's amazing like so anytime that the enemy is coming our enemy is satan so anytime the enemy is coming to you and lying to you and saying oh you're not good enough oh you're not smart enough oh you're not kind enough oh you're not talented enough whatever it is you can say you know what no I have power over the enemy. I'm going to praise Jesus. Jesus is good. He is holy. He created me and he created me in his image. And so I am good. And so I can be like him. And the things that he's put inside of me are good. And you can silence the enemy that way. And I love 
this scripture. This scripture has impacted me so much in how I pray for you guys and how I um, lead the children's ministry because I want you to know that you have power and that you have purpose. That God isn't just like, oh, well, the adults have purpose, the adults can have impact, but I want you to know that you can have an impact on those around you. Um, I think a lot of times people look at kids and they're like, oh, well, you're just a kid. You don't, you, you don't really understand and you don't really, you don't really know what to do to have an impact. But you know what? Those people are wrong. Um, first of all, Jesus said it. <laughs> Psalm says it. <laughs> um, and, but also I've heard that some of the stories, um, of you guys going to school and taking your Bibles to school and reading your Bibles to your teachers or reading them to your friends or praying with your friends or inviting them to church um, or being kind to the kids who maybe don't have a lot of friends. Um, I've heard those stories and those things are making a difference. Those things are having an impact. And so I don't want anybody to ever tell you that you can't have an impact because you're young, because that is just not true. And, you know, I know right now it's kind of a weird season that we're in and maybe you feel like, but Amy, right now I'm stuck at home and I definitely can't have an impact right now. I don't have anything to offer. I don't have, there's nothing I can do. And I'm going to tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> um, that's, that's just not true. You can have an impact because Jesus can do a lot with a little. And so I'm going to read you another story. So we're going to turn in our Bibles to John chapter 6. Um, and so here in John chapter 6, Jesus goes to the Sea of Galilee and he goes up in the mountains with his disciples. And all of a sudden there's this huge crowd. Um, and so starting in verse five, it says, when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Jesus is so tricky like that. He'll ask you a question, even though he knows the answer because he wants to see what you're going to say. Philip answered him. It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. And so I love this story for many reasons. Um, but I love that Jesus can do a lot with a little. Like I have five loaves here. This is five loaves of bread. Um, and I have two fish, two fish. Um, those are my two fish and Jesus made that enough to eat for over 5,000 people because there were probably more than 5,000 people there. That's a lot of people. Like this wouldn't even be enough to feed our church, let alone 5,000 people. And so Jesus can take just a little bit and make a lot. And so maybe you feel like, oh, I don't have a lot. You don't have to have a lot. Jesus can make your little a lot. He can make your little have a big impact. And you know what? I also love that he used a little boy's lunch to do this. And so he used a kid just like you. And, you know, I think it's funny because here they are in this huge crowd of people and none of these adults thought to bring lunch but this little boy had his lunch and he probably didn't think, Ooh, I'm going to feed 5,000 people today. So maybe you're like, I don't, Amy, I can't have an impact, but you can. Maybe it's, maybe you see that your sibling is having a hard day 
And so maybe it's saying something kind to them or doing something nice for them. Or maybe you see that your parents are stressed out. And so maybe you're going to help around the house a little bit more today. Um, just a little bit. Just, just a little tiny thing can have a huge impact. And you don't know what that is. And so I would just encourage you to ask Jesus, what little thing can I do today that you can take and multiply and have, it, have a big impact? Because... You know, I could give you all kinds of ideas, but I want Jesus to give you ideas. I want Jesus to lead you and show you this is the little thing that you can do today because nothing is wasted. You know, it wasn't just that there was enough to feed these people, but there was enough, there was baskets left over. There was 12 baskets of food left over. And Jesus said, let nothing be wasted. And so I want to encourage you today that God can use you, that you were created with purpose. You were created um, in such a way that with Jesus, you are powerful, even when this is all you have. So I hope that's encouraging to you guys. I love you. I hope we get to see you soon. Bye.